Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how we can use chords to find arc measures in circles. So just a quick reminder, we have two circles here at the top with a couple different measures and diagrams listed. So the one on the left here, we have a chord that is a diameter. So in this case, it has endpoints on the circle, but it goes through the center of our circle. So a diameter is a chord, but it's a more specific type of chord because it passes through the center of our circle. So if we do have a diameter, then we are just splitting our arcs of our circle into semicircles. So they would each be 180 degrees. Now we could also have a chord that is not a diameter. So in this case, it would be like the example we have on the right. And now we are splitting our, our circle into a minor and a major arc. All right, so let's look at three theorems that are associated with chords. Um, really, it's, it's two theorems here at the, at the top in yellow and white, and then the blue at the bottom is the converse of the theorem we see in white. So we're going to look at these three, talk through them, uh, do a couple examples associated with these three theorems, and then we'll have one more theorem that we look at at the end of this video. So the first one in yellow is the congruent corresponding chords theorem. And it just states that two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. And this is true of when we're talking about the same circle or if we're talking about two congruent circles. So we look over here at this diagram on the right in yellow, and we have two chords, A, B, and C, D. And so our two minor arcs would be right here, arc A, B, and arc C, D. Um, and what this is telling us is that if our chords are congruent, so if A, B is congruent to C, D, um, then our, our arcs are also congruent, all right? So we can use that to solve some problems in just a minute. The next one is the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. And it states that if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So that gives us a couple things here on the right side in this white diagram. So our diameter here is segment CD, and we have this right angle box which tells us that our diameter CD is in fact perpendicular to this chord AB. So now that tells us a couple things. AE would be right here, is congruent to EB. Um, so that's where the, the word bisect comes in, it bisects the chord, and it also bisects our arcs, okay? So arc AE um, would be equivalent, um, excuse me, that should be arc a C and arc C B. Those would be congruent to one another as well. Okay. And our last one that we're going to look at here um, is the perpendicular chord bisector converse. Um, and it just says that if one chord of a circle is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. So sort of the same diagram that we see here. Basically, we're just given um, the opposite information. Okay. Now we know that DC is perpendicular, it's a perpendicular bisector because of these markings that we see, because of these right, um, congruent tick marks and because of this right angle box, okay? So since that's a perpendicular bisector, then we can prove that DC is in fact our diameter, okay? So let's look at a couple examples where we deal with these three theorems. The first one, nice and easy. We have two circles, circle A and circle B. It tells us that our two circles are congruent also tells us that our chords are congruent. So CD is congruent to EF, gives us the measure of our minor arc EF, and we just wanna find the measure of minor arc CD. Well, since these two circles are congruent, since the chords are congruent, their minor arcs are also congruent. So CD is also gonna be 110 degrees. All right, example two. Now we have a diagram here where we have a perpendicular bisector. So we wanna first find BE. Well, if BF is 14, we know that FE is also 14. So if we add those together, we get 28. All right, and now we wanna find the measure of major arc BDE. So that would be here. All right, so what we are given, we know that these two arcs are congruent to each other. So let's go ahead and solve for X, and we can plug that value into one of these two expressions to find out what these um, arc measures are, and then we can just subtract that from 360 to find the major arc. So let's set these equal to each other, 127 minus x equals 2x minus 8. So let me add, not add 3, let's add x to both sides. That'll give me 127 equals 3x minus 8. Let's add our 8 over here to get 135 equals 3x, and divide both sides by 3 to get a value for x of 45. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in 45 right here, and that's gonna give me 90 minus eight, which is 82 degrees. 
So that tells me that arc CE is 82 degrees and arc BC is 82 degrees because they are congruent to each other. So now if I know those two arcs, though, if we add those together, 82 and 82, we get 164 degrees. So now for BDE, we can take 360 and subtract 164 degrees. And when we do that, we're gonna get 200, excuse me, we're gonna get 196 degrees for our major arc BDE, okay? All right, last theorem that we're gonna talk about and last example, this one is the equidistant chords theorem and it states that two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center of the circle, okay? And once again, needs to be in the same circle or in congruent circles. So we look at our diagram on the right and it tells us that AB is congruent to CD, so our two chords are congruent if and only if these distances here are equal to each other, which basically is telling us they are equidistant from the center. All right, so now we can use this theorem to help us find the radius of a circle. So here we have essentially the same diagram, but we have some measurements given to us. And we wanna find the radius. So remember the radius would be from the center point to the edge um, or to the circle, okay? So what we have done right here is we have created a right triangle and we can use Pythagorean theorem to help us solve for the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which will be the radius of our circle, okay? So now, since both of these are equal to 12, we know that the chords are congruent or they are equal to each other. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take our two expressions for the chords and set them equal to each other. So 5x plus seven equals 7x minus three. Here I'm going to subtract 5x. We get seven equals 2x minus three. Let's add three to both sides. We get 10 equals 2x. So when we divide by two, we get x is equal to five. So now if we plug in five here, we're gonna get 25 plus seven, which is 32. So that tells me that CD and AB are both equal to 32. Now, also we know that since this segment right here is perpendicular, it is going to bisect these chords. So if the entire chord is 32, we know this distance right here would be 16. So now we have 12 squared plus 16 squared equals C squared. And we can plug in R there if we wanted, okay? So now hopefully we can recognize that this is a Pythagorean triple. If not, let's work it out. So we get 144 plus 256 equals C squared. This gives me 400 is equal to C squared. And when we take the square root, we get C is equal to 20, okay? So now this tells us that our radius is equal to 20, okay?